Hello boys and girls, today I will be talking about the Military Heritage Matchlock Arquebus. This is a firearm that I purchased from them about six months ago. By now I have put probably about 200 shots through it, and it is the first black powder firearm that I have owned, but this is my honest assessment. Now. These are imported from India and sold by Military Heritage in an incomplete state. Basically, for legal reasons, the touch hole is not drilled. You have to do that part yourself. Get a 1 16th inch drill bit on a drill press and very carefully make that little touch hole. I did that. Um, now, I did have an issue here. This is my first of many small issues with this gun. Uh, the face of the breech is not quite placed perfectly relative to the touch hole. Um, the touch hole is a little bit too far. In my case, the touch hole is a little bit too far forward. So after I drilled it, there's a good deal of space right here where fouling can, can accumulate. And it becomes difficult to clean. Other people, though, I think sometimes have an issue with the breech face being too far forward. So then you have to drill the touch hole at an angle, at a forwards angle, in order to even be able to use it. The other complaint I have, I guess, is... The breech plug is not a flat face. It's called a patent breech. So there is a kind of, there's a smaller little tiny chamber deeper inside, which just makes cleaning harder. Um, and I wish they would have used a flat face. Uh, but it is what it is. The other issue I had when I got it is these jaws, the serpentine, it was too tight to put a match inside. I was able to bend it over time just by stuffing things, stuffing paper in between the jaws. I actually originally come to the screw here, but I found the screw to be kind of useless and I just took it out. Another issue I had was the safety catch. There's, there's, it's not here any, I took it out, but there used to be a safety catch, which goes right here and it basically prevents you from pulling the lever until you're ready to fire. Um, I took out the catch. I found it, I find it completely useless in, in a gun like this your safety is to not have a match in the jaws. If if you have a match in the jaws, that should only happen when you are pointing the gun down range and are about to fire. So the idea of having a separate safety catch to prevent you from accidentally lowering the match is just kind of pointless. Unfortunately, that means that now when I tighten the screw all the way, I have a little button sticking out and I will have to shorten the screw later to get rid of that. Um, oh, well, also, um, I should I should mention this is not the way the wood looks when you originally get it. It originally comes with a dark brown sort of lacquered glossy finish, which I did not like. Um, first of all, it doesn't look very historically accurate to have this sort of shiny finish. And also, once it gets scratched, the scratches are very obvious. So I stripped it all off with um, with a scraper and with some sandpaper and... Now it's just bare wood. What I will do soon is put linseed oil on it and give it a proper finish. But now you can see, right now you can see it the way it looks bare. And then later I will show you how it looks once it's done. And one little thing which bothers me, um, this lever is loose. Um, this is not, I think, I don't know if this is typical for their guns. It's, I would not think it's historically inaccurate. I'm sure lots of medieval weapons had little loose things like this. Um, it does bother me slightly, but it doesn't really matter. The other thing that I would complain about a little bit is maybe the ramrod. Um, the ramrod, I don't even know where it is right now, uh, but it comes with a ramrod that goes here. It's very lightweight, not very substantial. It works just fine for loading it as long as you're loading without a patch. However, for loading with a patch or for cleaning, you will need obviously something more serious that has the right fitments and attachments. So I made this first. This is just a wooden dowel with um, grooves that I cut to make it work as a cleaning jag. Um, you do not actually need a lathe to make something like this. You can just um, use a drill, a hand drill, and spin it while you, while you carve, uh, and it works okay. I also have this, which one of my friends made for me. And this is an aluminum cleaning rod with a proper threaded attachment for all kinds of 
you know, cleaning implements. When I shoot this weapon, I use, most of the time, I use just a naked brown ball. So powder first, about 50 grains of 2F black powder, and then a round ball. I use these, uh, let's see, 535 uh, lead round balls from Horniti. Uh, this is cheap. This is the cheapest way to go. It works just fine. And uh, with this difference in size from a 535 inch ball to a 57 inch, this is 0.57 inch caliber barrel, there's plenty of room for the balls to go down. Uh, I do not have an issue with them getting stuck or anything like that. I can shoot after like, t I can shoot like 20 shots. And um, sometimes I'll have to tap, tap the balls with a ramrod to encourage them to go down, but it's really not a problem. It loads easily. So uh, I really recommend using the 535 um, because it's cheap. You can also buy larger sizes from other sellers like Track of the Wolf. They can sell you a 55 or a 56 inch ball. It'll be a little more snug. Maybe if you want to do accurate patch shooting. Um, I have used those. I've tried shooting with a patch. I don't find it to be significantly more accurate, actually. And I also find that it becomes a real pain to load. Stuff gets stuck in the bore all the time. You have balls getting stuck in patches and it's kind of a mess. Maybe I just need more practice doing it, but I don't like it very much. For the uh, priming powder, I use 4F. Um, I tried using 2F and it did not work. Maybe 3F would work, I don't know. Of course, you also need match. So this is the match that I have made. Um, I made this from some jute cord I just bought from Amazon. It's very cheap. It's six millimeter diameter jute. And, and then I treat it in the process described by the Cap and Ball YouTube channel. And from there, I uh, really don't, I don't really have any problems igniting powder with this as long as, um, as long as I have it well placed in the pan. If I squeeze firmly, not too, not too slowly, you want to give it a firm squeeze, then I don't have a problem igniting the powder basically every time. I sometimes have misfires where the powder will go off, but it will not ignite inside. Uh, this can happen from just not putting enough powder in there. You got to fill this, fill this thing up kind of generously in order to make sure it goes off. Like I said earlier, you should only have, you should only have a match in here when you're ready to fire. Um, and you will want to put it in kind of like that, you know, with a burning end. Um, however, I do... Whenever you are not about to fire, you have this burning piece of match. And historically, the soldiers would just keep this in their hands, but we don't want to do that. We want to be safe. So what I use is a soft drink can. And uh, it's got a bunch of little holes in it so air can go through. And then when I'm not using the match, I just stick it in there with the burning end inside. That way I don't have any problems. And I make sure it's weighted. I actually put some bullets in the bottom so it's weighted. And this way the wind won't blow it away. Now, what I have learned to do in order to be safe also is I don't use too short of a piece of match. This is really as short as I would want to let it get. Uh, because if you have too short of a piece of match, then it could, when it falls out, if it, it, might, it might fall out of the can. It might get blown away by the wind. And then you have to walk around the gun line walk around the range looking for this little piece of smoldering match to make sure it doesn't start start a fire or set off anybody else's black powder. So it's really important, I think, to make sure you have a long piece. That way, you don't really lose it. You can, if it falls down, you'll see where it fell. And you'll know where it is, and you'll be able to make sure it gets removed and make sure you don't start a fire by accident. So once a match gets down to a piece like this or a little bit shorter than this, I would the best, safest way to dispose of it is just leave it, let it, let it go all the way down inside the can and leave it there as it burns out. Now, as for the historical accuracy of this piece, um, it's not great, as I understand it. Um, this weapon is dimensioned like one of the smaller uh, arquebuses of the late 1400s or maybe the early 1500s. Um, when they were famously used by the German Landsknecht. 
they however those guns did not have this style of lock plate and everything right here um this right here is reminiscent of the i think spanish and italian arquebuses which came a little later and had longer barrels so this doesn't this doesn't exactly correspond to any piece you know it, it, it resembles a, a spanish or italian weapon but it's got the length it's got the short length of a german one the sights, of course, are not not exactly accurate. That's not to say that historical arquebuses do not have any sights, but these sights in particular don't look too accurate. I mean, this has a kind of a U-shaped prongs right here, which I don't know. <laughs> probably not what they had. Probably they had simple bead sights, if anything. It's okay, I guess. For $600, I'm happy with this, although I would say if I had to do it again, I would probably get a bigger one. I would probably get the full-size matchlock rather than this um, short uh, piece. The Military Heritage does sell a matchlock musket that's got a 75 caliber bore. It's longer, and I think it's more historically accurate than this one. Okay, and I think that covers, I think that covers everything. Thank you for listening, and I will, I will get back to you later. Oh, where did my little where did my little piece of match go? I had a little piece.